guys and welcome back to Red Dog Gaming where today we are here with an update to the Imperatoris Mundi mod. The largest Rome Total War mod ever that added 630 regions, 630 regions guys to the game made by Da Wang. This is a new mod that goes on top of the Imperatoris Mundi mod made by Vamp Stick Drill, which expands the mod to have more factions to fill out all those rebel settlements. Now, Vamp Stick Drill has said that he intends to put around 95 new factions. I don't know whether they'll all be playable. 95 new factions into the game to fill out this monster, monster map. And if that is really true, that would be amazing. Please do realize that this is very much an alpha. This is very much a work in progress. But we're going to take a look at all these factions in a little bit of detail. Just to see where they are and how they fit into the map. This is really cool. I really like it because this huge map was begging for more factions to fill it out. Because it was quite empty. It was just full of rebel settlements. So these added factions are really going to add to the game. And of course we'll cover this mod again once these factions are full. But I wanted to bring it to your attention uh, right away because it looks awesome. Now before we get going guys, we've set a very ambitious goal of 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So if you're not subscribed, like 70% of you, please do so and like the video. Now without further ado, let's get into this first faction of Bactria, a fan favourite. Now here we are guys as Bactria and you start obviously up in the Caucasus. It's quite interesting that this mod uh, kind of sets you off with the fog of war as being darkness. Like you are walking into the abyss in Dark Souls, which is pretty cool. You do get an elephant's resource up here as well um, and you get two monstrous armies and a fuck ton, a metric fuck ton of money to start with. So you should have no problem conquering a few of these settlements and they are filled with really experienced and well armored armored hoplites who are a very strong unit in the game now let's toggle the fog of war just to show you where we actually start and there it goes so this is where you start on the map nearby you do have the parthians and south of you we have the aracosians now thing to note i didn't think i said how many factions have been added so far eight so far but um, Vamp Stick Drill is hoping to add about 95. So that should really fill out this whole map. But the eight added already are as follows. The Bactrians, the Aracosians, the Bosporus people, which are over here, as you can see, looking very nice indeed. And the Nabatai, which should be down here. There they are, the Nabatai, uh, Nubia, which will be down here, the Nubians, Lycia, where will Lycia be, is it down here, yeah, there is Lycia, Cappadocia, which is over here in Turkey, guys, I finally found it, and the Saba, which are down here in Arabia, now I don't believe they have added any new units into the game just yet, they've, um, you know, combined unit rosters for the other factions, for these factions, but they want to focus on adding factions first and units later. Obviously, unit making is quite a tough job, especially balancing the units out and all that sort of stuff against the other units in the game. So uh, doing the factions first is definitely the best way to do this and then adding the unit rosters in later. But this really does add an extra element to this map because before it was quite sparse and now you have factions kind of not everywhere, but... Uh, you know, filling in the gaps, which is awesome, which is awesome. So let's have a look at Bactria to start with. Here they are in the Caucasus, uh, ready, ready to, not the Caucasus, sorry, on the other side of the Caucasus, all the way in, I, what would you say, next to the northeastern Iran, probably? Uh, even further north than Iran, in central European belt up here, sorry, central Asian belt up here, but yes, in Bactria, which is awesome, at the tail end of the Himalayas, and they start amazing. Now, if we look at their unit rosters, um, they get a pretty decent unit roster, mix of Hellenic and sort of barbarian, well, not necessarily barbarian troops, but standard troops. They get axemen, um, mercenary hoplites, 
Parthian Swordsman. So a decent unit. So that's an added unit into the game there. Um, they have Militia Hoplites, Levy Pikemen, Hoplites, Phalanx Pikemen. So all the Pikemen you would expect. Armoured Hoplites, um, Royal Pikemen. So, and Silver Shield Pikemen and Bastani. So, a lot of uh, kind of mix. A few, you know, the Axemen and the Swordsmen. Decent non phalanx units as well as a strong phalanx roster. And then with the horses, they get Greek cavalry, and that is it. With the archery ranges, they get the Onigas, the standard archers, and the Peltasts. And that is it for their unit roster. Their building roster is very similar to other Greek factions, they can only go up to paved roads. But they uh, have a theatre as their temple. So public order might become a little bit of an issue. Um, because you don't really get that many public order buildings with as the Bactrians in this mod. But nonetheless, really cool. Bactria has always been a bit of a fan favourite. Interesting that they have elephants as a resource here. But elephants are actually not recruitable as part of the Bactrian cavalry um, cavalry tree but as I said units are going to be added in later so that is something that will surely be added in later I believe but looking at your starting position you have Parthia relatively nearby take you a few turn, well a couple of turns to get there but you've got all these fresh rebel settlements to start your empire before you go to war with the Arakosians or the Parthians with, and also the Seleucids who are very close as well. Juicy Seleucid territory up here because they ha don't have much armies around here to start. So it should be very easy to come into the back end of Seleucia and take these settlements without too much of a worry. Now guys, let's look at the Arakosians. So here we are with the Arakosians guys and you start out here bordering the Seleucids, but bordering this vast swath of India that is as yet unfactioned, I think is the word. <laughs> unfactioned, is that a word? Um, nearby to the Bactrians as well, but there is plenty of rebel settlements for you to get your teeth in before having to go to war with them. You do also start with a slightly less impressive army than the old uh, Bactrians, but still a very impressive army here. Look at this. Um, General's bodyguards of these guys are the standard Greek bodyguards because they are a Hellenic unit, Hellenic faction. So they have pretty much the same Hellenic uh, buildings apart from the temples. No temples just yet, unless we can build one in here. No, we can't. Uh, but no temples as of yet. But the unit roster is pretty much the same as the Bactrians apart from a couple of additions. So they have the Axemen again, but at this time they have the Armenian Axemen as well. Um, as well as the Arcosian Thorax Swordsman, which looked like a very decent Swordsman unit. 18 defense, 8 morale, 9 melee attack. Uh, almost equivalent to a legionary cohort, so getting them will be something that you'll want to do quite early on. Now on top of that, they just have the, the rest of the Phalanxes, Armoured Hoplites, Royal Pikemen, Silver Shield, and some Bastani there at the end. In terms of cavalry, same again, Greek cavalry. Now, on the Catapult range, they have the same as the Bactrians, but added to them the Pontic Heavy Peltasts. Now, their location-wise, as we've talked about, decent, uh, and these Seleucid lands will be very easy to take. But, as you are neutral to Seleucia, you do not need to go to war with them just yet, but it might be a good idea, because if you notice these Seleucid settlements, they are a lot less defended than these uh, rebel settlements out here. As you can see, you know, they have pretty much one or two troops in every single one. And whereas these settlements have quite large garrisons. So, going into India would be quite hard. Look at this one. Jesus. Abuya. Massive garrison. So, going into Seleucia might be the option for you with your slightly less strong army than the Bactrians. But you do start again with a lot of money. So you should be ready to expand and you should expand pretty easily early on. Please do note as well that this settlement is ready to expand straight away to the governor's palace. So take that as soon as you can. I just really love the faction icon here for the Arakosians. It looks awesome. It's the point of view of the pie when I'm just about to tuck in. Uh, but yeah, it looks really cool. It looks really cool. I love the kind of wavy crown as well. 
Awesome. So, yeah, the Arachosians for you guys. Now, let's move on to the Bosporus, another Hellenic nation. So, here we are with the Bosporans, guys. And one thing to note, even though these uh, cities are Bosporan, they have the Greek city-states flag above them at the start of the game. So, go and do that. Go and put a troop in each just to stop that <laughs> from occurring. Another really cool icon as well and you start up here in crimea um so that is pretty cool uh, nice region hellenic faction once again and you start uh, next to the scythians your location is pretty decent though apart from the scythians you have plenty of rebel settlements around but i would recommend if you're starting as these guys to go and take out the scythians straight away now they will have horse archers so you want to be wary of those because your phalanx armored phalanx uh Armoured Hoplites are not going to be that fast. But on top of that, um, if you can get them inside a city, they have to just sit inside the city unless they want to run outside and let you town take the town square. So you're going to, you know, get rid of those horse archers pretty quickly if you can take those cities. And as of now, at the start of the game, none of them have walls. They are not defended yet. So go and take out Scythia straight away. And then you'll have an easy run of it. All around here. Not too many factions nearby unless you want to jump across on a ship down here to Pontus and these guys. But as you can see, rebel settlements in this mod have a lot, re well, not a lot, reasonably large garrisons everywhere. So taking out the other factions early doors is probably an easier option for you. Um, Hellenic faction, once again, guys. So unit roster reflects that again. Um, pretty much. All this back end is the pikemen again, apart from the bastani. So you get the silver shield, royal armoured, phalanx, hoplites, levy pikemen and militia hoplites. But there is ad uh, added some different units, some warband, some standard barbarian warband, owing to the fact that you are here in the north next to the barbarians. Some, uh, some swordsmen, noble spearmen, which is a new unit, which is cool. 12, 11, 18. Awesome. Pretty decent, strong Spearman unit. Scythian Hoplites. So Scythian form of the Hoplites. Total defense 15, 8 morale 9 and 7. Pretty decent Hoplite unit that as well. As well as the Bastani, which we've already seen, and the Axemen. So a pretty well-rounded unit roster. Only two cavalry, but more than the other two factions we've seen so far. The Greek cavalry and these new Dacian Noble Lancers. 8 morale, 8 melee attack, 10 alt attack, which is really strong. 13 defense, which isn't huge, but a 10 charge. So a very strong charge hit and run cavalry. Good morale, powerful charge. Yes, 10 charge is massive. Apart from that, the building roster is standard for the Hellenic factions. Apart from the temples, no temples again. Um, and your starting position is pretty decent, nice, well protected, only the Scythians to worry about, and then these rebel rebel settlements. It will be a bit annoying taking a lot of these rebel settlements because, you know, a lot of them are going to be small. There's a few, couple of large towns near you, but a lot of these places are going to be towns. There's not really going to be cities, villages you can see, villages up here. So if you want to take them early doors to try and grow them, that would be recommended. If you can take all these villages early doors and try and build them up. Oh, look, Themyscira is a huge city. That's a nice little uh, Easter egg for you there as well if you want to go up to Themyscira. But you're going to have to take a rather large army. Let's see what the route would be for that, actually. You have to go all the way around that way. Oh, well, <laughs> that's cool. But yes, that is the Bosporans, guys. So let's move on to the Nabatai, a non-Hellenic nation. So here we are with the Nabatai guys, and they, as I said, they weren't, they aren't an exclusively Hellenic nation, more of an Arabian sort of nation. However, they do have a mix of Hellenic and Arabian traits. As you can see, this is a Hellenic design for this guy. It looks more like an Arabian uh, Eastern settlement there. However, compared to a, a Hellenic settlement, which is that design, uh, but you do start off with Requemo, a large town, and these two boys. Um, Abdemelquart, yes, that is a name that I can pronounce. Basaltes, I can pronounce that one, at least. Um, but yeah, you start off right next to Egypt, guys, and without a huge amount of expansion options nearby, apart from these rebel, rebel towns, and a big Egyptian army right next to you, ready to come and smash you. Um, but if you are going to start with these guys, please be warned, the, the unit roster isn't hugely fleshed out for these guys just yet. 
Um, so it will be quite hard for you to start as these guys on top of the hard starting position of being right next to an angry Egyptian horde. Um, and Egypt is massive, as you can see. Um, I've over uh, Pelusion. If you can get rid of this Egyptian army, Pelusion is an easy target. No real garrison. And then these guys as well. But, of course, this other massive Egyptian army is there, ready to take you out. So I'd probably expand down um, Arabia slightly uh, slightly earlier than you would attack Egypt anyway. Um, in terms of your building options, guys, pretty standard Hellenic again. Except you don't get the theatre, you just get the Ludus Magna. You get the Silk Road, though, however, which is excellent for that trade income bonus. Uh, but you only get normal roads. You do not get up to paved roads. Apart from that, it is pretty standard um, Hellenic slash Arabian, uh, Arabian building tree. Uh, now, in terms of the units you get, large town, you can recruit all your infantry, guys. So that is one benefit that you have as these guys. You can recruit all your infantry just from a large town. You start with Axemen, Hillmen, so don't recruit them. Eastern Infantry, don't recruit them. Most Rooney Hoplites, Fane, Fine, Levy Pikemen, and Hoplites. So no real strong elite infantry just yet for these guys. And just Armenian Cavalry as an option for you as Heavy Cavalry, which are a pretty decent cavalry unit. Six Morale, six Melee, seven Alt, 16 Defense, which is good. Six Charge, which is okay. So pretty mid-level, uh, mid-tier uh, cavalry unit on top of that archers standard archers and some onagers so the units aren't yet fleshed out for this faction guys so a bit of a harder start if you do want to start with them i'd probably wait until the unit roster gets updated for these guys but a cool faction nonetheless if you want to go on an arabian rampage but there might be a faction for that down there <laughs> somewhere ready to go as well and please do note you start with an absolute ton of money, just like the other factions we've seen so far as well. Now, guys, on to Nubia. Please do note before we get on to Nubia, guys, when you go on to Nabatai on the... I've just noticed it. When you go into Nabatai on the uh, faction selector, Nabatai and religion is so damn awesome. 11, 11... <laughs> It's not 11, it's trying to put exclamation mark. Oh my god, oh my god. Superman, please take my picture at the ruins of Petra, Hellspawn. <laughs> so apparently Hellspawn speak this truth. <laughs> but yeah, pretty funny. Whereas all the other ones don't have a description yet. <laughs> so, nice vamp stick drill. Very nice indeed. <laughs> On to Nubia, guys. So here we are with Nubia guys, and as you can see, you start down here in Lower Egypt slash Ethiopia, kind of. And I'm really glad Nubia's in there, an awesome flag once again, uh, because they were a strong faction in this region for quite some time, as well as the Empire of Kush, the Kingdom of Kush. So it's nice to see Nubia in here, and you start right next to a neutral Egypt, as well as all this land down here, which you could go and take at your leisure because no one else is even close by to go and take it. There is a settlement over here, uh, but this is just wasteland. So if you want to take Tondidaru and this one, good luck. <laughs> it's a long way for you to go, as well as into these ones in the middle of the desert as well. Uh, but you can take all this area at your leisure. You do start with quite a few troops, as you can see. Now, the troop mix is sort of Hellenic slash Egyptian from the base game. So let's take a look at that now. We look on the unit roster. You do get cavalry stables all the way up to full and siege engineer all the way up to full as well. A very fleshed out building roster, as you can see, guys. You can pretty much get everything up to huge city level, which is awesome. Really good. But please do note, you don't get highways. You only get paved roads and you don't get anything past public baths either you do get a ludus magna so you get better traits for your guys and you get religious buildings with these guys so that's good so the army barracks so allows you to get nile spearmen desert axemen and pharaoh's guards so egyptian units mainly and then on top of that you get nile cavalry with your um with your stables now as it's as it shows guys you don't get them until large city so it's obviously going to be fleshed out so you get new units at every single one with the unit rosters coming later as i've spoke about plenty of times the siege engineer you get skirmishers and bowmen 
um, and you get plenty of um, mercenary options as well. Uh, but on top of that, let's have a look at, at the temples, guys. You get the temple city, so Isis, you get Osiris, you get Imhotep, you get Set, and you get Horus. So with these, you know, different bonuses everywhere, that's a very nice one with the trade income and experience mixed. So you get loads of different bonuses. No units from the temples as of yet, but there might not be. So a very sort of Egyptian feeling faction. But looking at it, you start with a load of money and you start with a load of units, including some mercenary hoplites to sort of flesh out these armies at the start. Because a lot of them are skirmishes and bowmen in here. You get some Egyptian chariots as well. Oh, do we get chariots from the from here? Yes, we do. So in here you get Egyptian chariots and Egyptian chariot archers with the foundry as well. So that's a big added punch to your Egyptian style armies but look how many troops you have guys so you can get on the conquest very early on and take some of these really undefended towns out here probably pretty quickly and pretty easily as well as going for these larger settlements along the river nile so a very nice addition guys i really like it really like it indeed please do note that this region down here is kind of an exclave with a rebel army right next to you so do be do be wary of that but plenty of uh, areas to take down here ready for your taking. So, on to the next faction, guys, which is Lycia. So, here we are with Lycia, guys. And you are another Hellenic faction on the southern edge of Anatolia, crushed in by the Seleucids, including Salamis out here as well. You start with a huge amount of troops. Look at this. Huge amount of hoplites, some Cretan archers, which are great, and some armoured hoplites. All pretty well experienced as well and with good armour upgrades. So you should be ready to go out and fight straight away and take some of these Seleucid settlements. Now, unlike your brothers in the east, these Seleucid settlements are better defended, as you can see. And some of these settlements are really well defended. And the only real way you can either go is south through the Greek city-states and into Macedon, which eh, you might not want to do. Or, but you can go north into the Seleucids, break some of these garrisons to get to some of the softer territory behind, as you can see. But don't be surprised when the Seleucids turn on you with these big armies and put together a few big armies as well. But judging by the amount of troops you guys have, it should not be too much of a problem to break through all these guys and take all this Seleucid land early, early on. Now, they are Hellenic, as we spoke about before, so let's have a look at their building roster. As you can see, no temples again, but the uh, theatre and the Ludus Magna are there. Only paved roads. Everything else upgrades quite nicely. Nothing from the foundry, but you do get a catapult range, which give you onagers, archers, and peltas, standard units. And cavalry stables, which give you Greek cavalry. And Dacian horse archers, which is a cool option. So you can go horse archer death stack very early game if you want to. Um, so Dacian horse archers just from large town level, like the Parthians getting their horse archers there. So very, very nice unit to have. Very strong unit. Probably the most... Horse archers are the most OP units in the game, guys. So you should not have a problem beating back the Seleucids if you have access to them. Now, in terms of their infantry, Bastarnite, which is great, Axemen, Mercenary Hoplites, Samnite Mercenaries, Militia Hoplites, Levy Pikemen, Lycian Thorax Swordmen, so that really strong unit, equivalent to, almost equivalent to a um, legionary cohort there as well, which is nice. Uh, on top of that, you have more and more pikemen, phalanx pikemen, armoured hoplites, royal pikemen, silver shield pikemen, and bastana again, guys. So, plenty of options for you if you want to go Hellenic or horse archer, which is kind of cool. There's not really many factions that allow that sort of mix. So, a really cool faction. And you're in a prime location to take some of the richest lands in the game, as you can see, guys. So, that is a great addition to the game. So, on to Cappadocia. So, here we are with Cappadocia, guys, and you are right in the middle of Anatolia with Mazaka as your capital and only settlement. You start with a lot less money than a lot of the other factions, as you can see, 23,000 compared to some of the others with like 80,000 odd. 
which is great. But on top of that, you have four... Well, you'd probably be able to make two and a half full stacks out of all these armies ready to go and choose your enemies. Because you're in the middle, you've got plenty of options. Um, you can choose who you want to fight. Whether you want to take these rebel settlements first with their huge garrisons, or maybe go north and defeat that Pontic army and take their two settlements with ease, or go south down into the Seleucids and split them in half. That would probably be my option if I was playing as these guys. I mean, these Armenian territories don't have many troops so maybe armenia but you're going to be in a much longer drawn out war as you can see because armenia starts with a lot of settlements um so yeah the seleucids getting rid of them early on would be a good option and you could probably broker a ceasefire eventually um because they're so big and so spread out um as i say well i said armenia is going to be a long drawn out war seleucid would be a war to end all wars forever but by removing their power base in this region you really won't need to worry about them too much because they'll have threats in the east now. Um, but Pontus would be a good one to take out early on as well. Or you could go into all this rebel territory and take some of it. However, as you can see, big garrisons again. Very big garrisons. These ones are barbarian though, so they should be pretty easy to deal with with your troops. Um, these ones will be Hellenic, so probably a lot harder to deal with in a siege battle. Which ones are these, Cappadocians? So these guys have similar troops to you. As you can see, your armies are very nice indeed. Mercenary hoplites, Cretian archers, and one thing to note with these Cretian archers, guys, is a lot of them have the gold, um, gold weapon upgrade, which means their missile attack is 16. That is equivalent to a Praetorian cohort's peeler. So if you are starting as these guys, use these Cretian archers to your advantage, guys. They will be incredibly, incredibly, incredibly strong on the battlefield with that 16 missile attack. That is brutal. So you've got Cassandros, Philotas, and Toikros, as well as Clisthenes, Clisthenes, Clithenes, Clithenes. That's that's him. Clit he needs at Mazaka. So, yes, um, you're in a very nice position. Uh, very nice position. Lots of choice around you. Standard Hellenic, again, as we've seen. Only paved roads, no temples, but the Ludus Magna and the theatre, as well as the farming options. Uh, where is their health? So, health can go up to aqueduct with these guys, which is great. But the army barracks, as we've seen, allow you to get the axemen. I think it's pretty much the same um, same roster as the Bactrians, etc. Except the slight difference with the Pontic Swordsmen here. Who are a very decent unit. You can see 10 morale, 9 melee attack, 13 and 20 defense. I don't know whether this is from Danny Mox. It looks like they're from the Danny Mox um, rosters expanded mod. So that might be from there, but I'm, I'm not quite sure. The Greek cavalry in the cavalry stables... And then the archery range, onagers, archers, and peltasts, which is very nice indeed. Now, I'm wondering whether you can recruit Cretan archers here, but it doesn't look like it. No. Um, but yeah, please do note, though, you don't start with any military buildings, guys, and it's only a large town. So you're going to have to build up your military building straight away or go for one of these uh, settlements that does. Kwana Iriopolis. You'll probably use your spy to check out a few of these cities their large towns to see whether any of them have some good uh, military buildings because you want to go for that as early as possible there we are guys so that is Cappadocia now on to the last last uh, nation which is the Saba so here we are with the Saba guys and you are down here in Yemen at Tamina very little enemies around you and the enemies that do have a long way to go to get to you uh, probably the uh, Nubians are the closest, but it's very unlikely they're going to get boats and sail across to you. So you have an easy pickings of this region to start with. Very easy. You can probably take the whole of Arabia without really getting too much uh, worry from anyone else. Um, on top of that, you know, you can come and sail across here and take some of these port towns and get your trade up really quickly. That is something that I would recommend once you've taken... This sort of cluster here is sending an army across to take these port towns and 
get that trade up really quickly. Probably get trade with the Nubians, the Egyptians, and the Seleucids as well. And you'll be in the money. In the money. You don't start with as much money as some of the other factions. But you do start with an, another huge amount of armies. But these are pretty trashy armies because you are a sort of eastern faction. Unfortunately for Rome, there are really no Arabian factions. So there aren't any base game really Arabian units. Apart from like uh, mercenaries like the Bedouin archers like we see here. They're on camels so... Everyone knows how much I hate camels <laughs> in Total War games. So I ain't going to pass judgment on these camels. But <laughs> no, I don't like camels. But you are in a very unique position. And there's not really any other faction like it in base game at all. Which is really cool. And you get free reign over this whole area. In terms of your building options, you can go all the way up to Huge City. And you get a lot of Huge City options. No uh, religion once again. But you get the Ludus Magna. The Silk Road, which is great, but you only get roads. You do not get paved roads or anything more than that. Secret Police Network, which is great for law, especially in faraway areas. Foundry, I don't believe it. it no, Egyptian Chariots you get from the Foundry, which is awesome. So the Catapult Range, you get your Persian Heavy Archers, Onagers, and Archers. So these Persian Heavy Archers are just a really decent arch unit. 8 Missile Attack, 10 Defense. Very good indeed, and 8 morale is really good for an archer unit. Now your cavalry, you get access to camel archers. I'm not going to click on them. Cappadocian cavalry as well. 8 morale, 7 melee, and 23 defense with 9 charge. So a really, that is an incredibly strong cavalry unit there, guys. It's a very heavy cavalry unit. So very nice for you indeed. And note that you can recruit all your infantry, infantry just from a large town, which is awesome. Hillman, Eastern Infantry, Militia Hoplites, but there are a couple of unique ones. Sabbath Swordsman, 10 Morale, 10 Melee Attack, and 25 Defense. So it is a very heavy infantry unit. And then you get the option of the Sabbath Thorax Swordsman, less Defense, 8 Morale, so less Morale and less Melee Attack, but they fire that missile before charging. And on top of that, they get the Armor Piercing Primary Weapon, so they're your Armor Piercers. And you get Levy Pikemen, which are trash. So if you can... Recruit these swordsmen as much as possible, and they will just shred everything around you. Now, your starting armies are pretty meh. They're not as good as some of the other armies we've seen, because they're made predominantly of eastern mercenaries and art Bedouin camel archers. Um, so you're going to find it a little bit tougher to take some of these garrisons. But as you can see, uh, you are the only one in this region. So you can really take your time if you want to. Obviously, it's better to play aggressive. But if you want to take your time, you can do. But with that money going down quickly, you need to take a few settlements just to get your economy stable. Uh, but you should have plenty enough troops to do just that. Because I'm assuming a lot of these uh, places in the region will just have eastern mercenaries and archers and peltasts just like yourself. So that is it, guys, for the factions. Obviously, as I've said, um, Vamp Stick Drill wants to add another 95-ish uh, factions into this and fill out this whole map. Can you imagine if that becomes reality? That would be amazing. Obviously, as I've said, please note it's in alpha. It is just a work in progress. That's why the unit rosters have not been fleshed out just yet. So please don't criticize that. Um, but the, uh, the factions getting added in is the most important thing, I would say, before the unit rosters get fleshed out. So that this map becomes full and vibrant and full of life, rather than just all these rebel settlements, which is awesome. I love the idea. I think it's a great idea, and hopefully um, it will be realized. That would be amazing. Um, on top of that, I'm just excited. I'm really excited to see... Uh, any updates to this any more factions being added unit rosters being changed all that sort of stuff that is very exciting <laughs> nothing but oil i didn't even realize that when i saw saw this in the uh, the last video but guys as i've said check out my other video where we look over the map and look at how large the map is and all the uh, regions in it please do check that video out. I've set that ambitious goal of hitting 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year, so please subscribe as 75% of you are not who watch our videos. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Subscribe and like and all that good stuff. And I'll see you again on the next video.